I've done a lot of Pokemon challenge runs in my day, from bug only playthroughs to Nuzlocks and a lot of things in between, but never have I ever tried to beat a Pokemon game without taking damage. What? Yo, what is going on YouTube? It's your boy Dan, aka Drop. I pretty guys a brand new video today, and today we are reacting to small ants. Can I beat Pokemon Platinum without taking damage? Yeah, I don't know, Kenny. This is gonna be pretty crazy. For those who don't know, Small Ant is a content creator on Twitch and YouTube who does speed runs of video games, various Nintendo games, and actually is a really cool dude. I reached out to him and I said, hey, you mind if I do some reaction videos to some of your content? He said, hey, go for it. And I know Small Ant is a frequent uh, kind of viewer of my Twitch channel, which is always cool. So if you're watching this, man, I appreciate you supporting my content. But we're gonna have some fun, and I've actually never seen this full video. He is gonna try to beat Pokemon Platinum without taking damage. And that, to me, is like, <laughs> Just a stupid, crazy attempt. Like, how did he even get this idea in the first place? I have no idea. But if you guys enjoy this video, be sure to hit that like button down below. Get those subscriptions turned on, man. Notifications on. Subscribe to the channel. And of course, let me know in the comment section below what the craziest challenge run you've ever done is. I'd love to hear your thoughts and maybe it'll inspire a challenge for me to try. I have no idea. But man, this is about to be wild. And again, of course, before we start the video, big shouts to my man Small Ant. You can check him out in the description below. But let's get it fired up and let's see if he can actually beat Pokemon Platinum without taking damage. All right, I'm really excited for this. This is gonna be nuts, dude. I don't even know how this is even a thing, but let's find out, Small Ant. Pokemon Platinum came out in 2008. I played a ton of it as a kid. Gen 4 is probably the one I put the most hours into. I played a lot of Gen 4 myself, but I do feel like uh, the game is a little bit slow, but I do hope we get Sinnoh remakes next year, man. I'm really hoping for that, because I think that could be sick. I wanted to replay it recently for nostalgia, you know, but it's Pokemon. If you've played it once, there really isn't much reason to play through again, so I made it a bit more interesting. All right. I tried to beat Pokemon Platinum without ever <laughs> having my Pokemon take any damage. You're a bad lad, dude. <laughs> Here's how it went. I named myself Ant, and the rival was the man, I of like course. It. And walked over to get my first Pokemon Ooh, from who Noah. does he pick? I chose Piplup. It starts with Pound instead of Tap. I'm actually surprised Piplup, but I think water types are really good. I would think you would go Snivy, though, because if you're gonna not take any damage, you have to be fast, right? And Superior is the fastest of the three starters. So I would have initially thought that Superior would probably be the best bet, but this guy's the expert, not me. Tackle, which is great because it has 100% accuracy instead of the 95% accuracy that Tackle has in this generation. Okay. Then the man wanted to fight. Did just he just have to reset? Drop, he lost, he lost nine minutes in. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Yep, took damage, <laughs> had to reset. To not take damage fighting this Turtwig, it needs to withdraw six times in a row. Wow. And then miss two tackles. Barring a crit from Piplup, the chance of this happening are around 0.004%. Oh my so goodness. So I threw myself at the battle over and over for half an hour until I quit. Well, with Piplup at least. I thought about it a bit harder and it turns out- Okay, I'm an idiot. I just realized that I was just telling you guys to pick Snivy. And Snivy's not even in this game. <laughs> okay, I do not want to look at the comment section. Forgive me, please. I forgot about that. Turtwig, Chimchar. I would think Chimchar would be better because Chimchar is the fastest starter. I totally just, it's early and I forgot my, my starters. My bad. I apologize. So, Turtwig was the right choice. Fighting against Chimchar, it knows Leer instead of Withdraw as its non-attacking move. Okay. This means it won't make our attacks weaker each turn. All that needs to happen is Chimchar Leering four times in a row which is a 1 in 16 chance. Yep. Much better odds. And on the third like attempt it. with Turtwig, I lucked out and it happened. No damage rival battle. Okay. Leer again. Leer again. He made it. I like yes, it. Yes, we're through. We've done it. After 40 minutes, I was finally able to make some progress. Not bad, not Rowan, bad. Rowan, nicknamed Turtwig, get some Pokeballs, and then we're free to have some fun. I can go right up to the next route, battle the first trainer who has a Starly with Quick Attack. Ah. Oh. Huh. Okay, it's time to start solving problems. What can you do to not get hit by a Starly that has a move that will always hit before you? I would really think that like the the approach is you have to just super over level and just spend the time to grind it out so you one shot everything. But this is tricky because you just have to get lucky without the quick attack. And that's something that you'll see throughout the game. He has to get lucky with priority moves. Well, Turtwig literally can't. He learns no priority moves. I had to catch my own Starly. Here's how that went. Let's do it. Oh, okay. Catching other Pokemon makes sense. I get it. I totally oh, forgot that growl. was an option. Use Growl. Thank you. 
Now, if he takes One, damage, do you have to start the two, whole playthrough over? Three. Yes. First try. I got lucky and caught it first try. Then I accidentally pressed the power button and had to redo it all, which took like an hour. Anyways, uh, with the Starly in the party, I had to train it up until it could one-hit KO the opponent's Starly with its own quick attack. A quick attack KO is guaranteed once Starly evolves and gets to level 19. Oh so I had to do God. some grinding. Grinding in this challenge isn't like normal Pokemon grinding at all. To guarantee you never take damage, you need to also one-hit KO every wild Pokemon. So I think what he's doing right now, if I'm not mistaken, is looking for Krikatot. Krikatot only has Bide, I think, at the beginning of the game, so it has no attacking moves. So I think he has to grind out Krikatot, but it's like a 10 or 20% spawn at nighttime. Unfortunately, the only attacking moves that Turtwig and Starly know are Tackle. And if I use those, there's a 5% chance that they miss each time. Ugh. Getting to level 19 with Starly, I'll be using enough tackles that I'm essentially guaranteed to miss at least once. Oof. So I needed to find an alternative to training against wild Bidoofs and Starlies. The solution is found at night. Turns out this route has a minor Cricketot infestation. At night, minor. there's a 10% chance for a Cricketot to oh, appear. God, and at this 5%. level, little musical bugs only have Bide and Growl. Oh, Bide takes gosh. two turns to deal damage. So as long as my Pokemon can defeat the Cricketots in two turns, we're good to grind. But of course, Starly can't do it in two turns, but Turtwig can. So I had to train Turtwig up until it was able to oh one shot the Cricket Tots. Then so I could brutal, switch dude. train Starly until it could fight them. During the Can we just give this guy like a round of applause for even trying this? I don't even need to see the rest of the video. Like, this is incredible. This grinding, the chat and I decided on the full rules for the challenge. We decided that after each badge, I was able to save, and if I happened okay. to take damage, I could reset the game that's back fair. up to I the think, previous I think that's so We fair. felt this stays true to the challenge because it's really about strategizing, about how to make progress, rather than wasting my life away doing mindless grinding for hours. That's so but fair, I agree. As you'll see, I still wasted a rather large amount of time. Oh, and another thing. I mean, even allowing every badge as opposed to every route, like, that's, I think that's... For mindless grinding, I sped up the game because, again, I'm not trying to waste my life fighting Krikatots for 30 hours. After exterminating wow. the entire Krikatot population, my Starly in. evolved and grew to level 19. Which is sped up, I was so. ready for the first battle. I completely stomped youngster Tristan with quick attack and was able to progress. 19 Starly, dude! nine in-game hours one. to defeat the first trainer. This is <laughs> gonna be a long nine one. Hours. In addition to Staravia, I had to train up Turtwig all the way to level 25 in this route to evolve and learn Mega Drain. It's the first somewhat okay grass move with 100% accuracy. This took an additional nine in-game hours. From here, wow. I was able to move up to Jubilife, I crushed the man with Staravia, and ran over towards Orbra, and accidentally ran into this trainer. Oh, he's gonna, he's gonna have quick attack. Yes! Oh, okay. Oh my god. What do you do if you run into a Pokemon with Aftermath? Is that a thing? Ah. Uh. That quick attack had a one-fifth chance to not KO, by the way. I really could not afford to make any oh more mistakes gosh. like that. With that over, I carefully navigated the route in case, oh, enter Orberg yeah. City, and battle the first gym. I did the calculations, you and my level 25 bottle right? should just barely be able to take out Rorik with Mega Drains. Go Runk, baby! Yeah, this one's easy. Oh, he can't- he doesn't want to raise a loop because he can miss. Oko, good! The Kranidos is the only issue, but I think you'll knock it out. One hit KO! This is the one. This is the tough I think one. Good. I think he's good. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yes. All right, oh, we're... thank God. Okay. Just like that, the first gym was done. I made my first save point and I was ready to move on to Floroma Town. This was where in, I made dude. the discovery that made this challenge a lot more difficult. Team up battles. Double battles. In these battles, yeah. you're forced to team up with someone else. And the people who you're teamed up with kind of suck. The first required team battle is with Dawn against two Galactic Grunts. These grunts have a Glamio and a Stunky. The Glamio knows faking. So you gotta get lucky and have them basically attack your your teammate and make sure you target the right thing. You know what I mean? Like that's that's ridiculous. The only option is to quick attack to outspeed the Glamio, as priority moves in this game all have the same level of priority. Then hope the Stunky doesn't hit me. No matter what I do, it's essentially a 50-50 chance of getting hit. So I quick attack the Glamio, which I miscalculated and it didn't even take it out, but the Glamiao and Stunky both attack the Piplum, wow. enabling me to finish this battle first try. Nice! After that <laughs> battle, it was clear my Pokemon needed to be stronger. So I trained up Grottle until level 32, so it evolved <laughs> into a He's got a Torterra with one badge. Then went to Valley Windworks was next, and inside was Commander Mars. Yeah, this trainer is no joke. is a level 17 Fake Perugly. out Perugly! It has Fake Out. To outspeed and one-hit KO the Perugly with quick attack, my Staravia needed to evolve and then get to level 40. I oh my god. 
<laughs> he has one badge. One badge right now. I only had the first badge. I grinded against level 10 wild Pokemon until I took damage because I'm dumb. And that team up battle that I did first try earlier took three tries to get past again. Then grinded for another two and a half oh hours until Staraptor was finally a level 40 and I could defeat a level 17 Wow. Karugu. After saving Valley Windworks, I was able to move wow. up into a turn of forest and oh God, it's more team up battles. And this is Cheryl, she's forest, bad, she's got you Chansey. You forced to team up with Cheryl. The first required battle in a turn of forest is against Jack and Brianna. Brianna has a Pachirisu with quick attack. You could so just earthquake went... though. Oh, it's got quick attack. Well, you could, well, it, so here's the thing. Now that he's got the grotto with earthquake, he can like one shot everything. As long as the Patrice doesn't quick attack, of course. Went into it, hoping for the best, no! and I got hit. So I went all the way oh, back to the first no, gym. Oh, dude! I, did three I, I feel the pain for you, man. I really do. What a what a legend this guy is. Three hours of grinding. This time, catching him a doof for HMs and finding a diseased weasel. Go. Oh my God! He got a shiny. <laughs> I love his reaction. <laughs> <laughs> I put it out of its misery, of course. Then. I tried the fight again. Uh, I went for the quick attack this time to just cover himself. But now you run the risk of the Weedle attack, or the Wormpole attacking you. I'm getting all my Pokemon mixed up today. Okay. Egg bomb strats. Straight shot. Straight shot. Let's go. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I love it, all dude. All right. Aerial Ace is clutch all too good, right. man, to do all this. Finally. We're good now. And I succeeded. I beat the first required be battle of the through, forest. Uh, Gardenia, though. Keyword, first. Okay, so fortunately, the, yeah, though, you the other battles I was able to force into single battles, yeah. so they weren't a problem, and I was able to cast aside the blight of Cheryl. <laughs> Turna City is the location of the grass gym, and because I had a level 40 Staraptor, I completely <laughs> blew it away with a wing attack. The second badge was mine. Love it. After a 30. What if he had wing attacked into Poison Point and got poisoned and took damage though? Like for real, these are, it's like the amount of variables this dude is dealing with is like, it's its ridiculous. Three and a half in-game hours. Not including the time spent in the resets, by the way. After the gym, I went back and got a Buizel for later. 75% chance. Please. Oh, for One, surf and stuff. Two, three, big pause. Nice. Let's go. Easily cleared out the galactic base, grabbed a bike and the explorer kit. I cautiously traveled through to Heart Home with a few uneventful battles along the way. The next big hurdle was badge three from Fantina, the ghost okay. gym leader. Oh, you can't Fantina has a Dusk Skull with Shadow Sneak, a yeah, priority but you can get move, around that. then a Haunter with Sucker Punch, That's harder. also a priority move. The Dusk Skull was simple to deal with because Shadow Sneak couldn't hit my Staraptor, but the Haunter was trouble. Sucker Punch was able to hit my Staraptor and Quick Attack couldn't Aqua hit the Jet. Haunter. So in order to beat the Haunter, I needed to train my Buizel to level Jet. 45 so it evolved and had the stats to defeat the Haunter with a single Aqua Jet. The final Pokemon, Miss Magius, was a simple crunch. There you go. And the third badge was mine. Nice. After 46 in game hours. I really, I gotta say, like, watching this really makes me wanna try something like this. Just because I think the strategy of having to problem solve all the little issues that you run into along the way, really, really epic. The third badge in the bag, this was where the challenge changed. I grabbed a gift, Eevee, but the man who gave me some incredible advice. Make sure all your attacks hit, avoid every enemy attack. That's the strat. I like it. That's all you gotta do. <laughs> and walked into Salacian Town, confident as ever. Salacian Town has the Pokemon Daycare. The Daycare is what turned this challenge from a boring, grindy mess into a fun puzzle. If you deposit Pokemon in the Daycare, every step you take, your Pokemon gains one experience point. So all I had to do to get level 100 Pokemon was to shove them in the Daycare and bike up and down over and over until I traveled around 1 million tiles. And that's what I did. I threw Staraptor and Floatzel into the daycare and off stream biked up and down for 30 in-game hours or around eight yeah. hours with the speed up. The next stream, I was ready to crush this game or go. so I thought. Uh, I picked up my incredibly powerful level 100 Pokemon, swept through Route 215 please until I encountered gym. a very unexpected problem. Ace Trainer Dennis. He was an unavoidable trainer who had a Drift Blimp. Drift Blims have the ability Aftermath, where on the turn oh, the Pokemon is defeated, you need if the opposing Pokemon made contact, it takes or damage. Not made contact, I guess. This was a problem. My two level 100s only had moves that made contact. We scoured the game and strategized the best we could, and the best solution to the problem, barring extra hours and hours of grinding, was getting Rock Tomb and teaching it to Floatzel. In okay. Gen 4, Rock Tomb only has 80% accuracy. It was ah. a 1 in 5 chance that I would take damage. 
a one in five chance I would have to spend eight more hours of my life biking oh, up man. and down. Here's the battle. He missed! No! 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 <sighs> oh, no! Why? No! Just one closer to 69, baby. Uh, I should have probably just done some extra grinding on my Torterra instead. But oh, I reset. No. And since I'm stubborn, I just tried the Rock no, Tomb strategy again. No, he's gonna miss again. again! Yes! Oh. Oh, it doesn't happen. My heart twice. can't take Let's this, man! Go. So that was a fun way to waste eight hours. With that fight complete, I moved on wow. to the fourth gym, swept the whole thing easily, and saved the game. 73 hours in. Next up was doing a quick battle against some galactic grunts with Dawn. The oh grunts God. opened with two Zubats, so I can't earthquake them with Torterra. Rock's I was line. a bit reckless here because I had just finished a gym, so I decided to test my luck, taking yeah. them on without any strategy. I had to reset a few times until... Nice. nice. <laughs> this was the moment Chat and I decided to never make a single mistake ever again. So we came up with a foolproof plan to defeat the Zubats. I walked down to Pastoria City, went to the Move Reminder, and taught Float Swift, Swift, which hits both Pokemon in double battles. That's it. With this dude. excellent idea, I was able to defeat the Grunts without having to rely on good Genius, luck. Genius, dude. The fifth gym was up next, and it was easy. Just Aerial Ace Crash Awakes Gyarados, Quick Attack the Floatzel as it had Aqua Jet, and Aerial Ace the Quagsire. Love Five it. badges down, three to go. There you go. Before the sixth gym, I did have to run a few errands, like delivering the old charm to Sign Cynthia's notes. grandma in Celestic Town. I traveled through the foggy area on Route 210 and accidentally got into a battle. Of course, I had also forgot to use Defog, so I was going into oh, the battle his with a 40% chance to miss each attack. Aerial Ace. Fortunately, I had Aerial Ace for Scyther, but the Scyther knew Quick Attack, so I had to use my own Quick Attack. It hit. Oof. Next was a Luxio, which I was able to take out with an Aerial Ace. The final Pokemon oh. was the worst case scenario, a Probo Pass. Both Swift and Aerial Ace would not take it out in one hit. Here's what happened. Don't miss. No. No! no. Okay, okay, no damage. And you're still faster. Oh. Wow. Ah. This is wild, dude. Ah. <laughs> this is crazy. Oh, that was lucky. The rest of the route, I smartened up and used Defog, so it was stress-free. I destroyed Cyrus in the Ruins, snagged Surf, and made my way to Candelab City. The man was waiting for me, so I Aqua Jet the Staraptor and Infernape, Aerial Ace's Rose Raid and Heracross, and Quick Attack the Floatzel. Nice. Easy. Before the gym, I paid a visit to Iron Island to see ah, Riley. Riley. To get the HM for strength, you have to talk to Riley. The thing is, all of the Iron Island battles are dreaded team battles. Fortunately, though, Riley just hands strength to you right at the start and waits yep, for you inside. Skip it. So, I abandoned him and went right back to Candelab for the gym. The gym was fairly straightforward. I did need to pick up a Mystic Water in Pastoria, though, to ensure an Aqua Jet KO on a Scizor that knew Quick Attack. Other than that, though, it was a clean Surf Sweep for the sixth nice. badge. Team Galactic started causing some chaos, so I went to Lake Valor, cleaned things up there, then Lake Verity because Dawn couldn't handle it herself, yep. and up towards Snow Point to Lake Acuity, uh, where it's hailing. Oh, but that's okay no! because. How? Okay. How? Do you get through, you have to catch an uh, uh, ice type and you have with ice shard and heal and get it to 100 probably with the daycare. That, that's that's my first thought here. You gotta have something that can't take damage. Alternatively, safety goggles, I think we're in gen three, but I don't know if they actually did the effect until Oras. So I don't know. I think you have to get a, a, a hail type or an ice type, but you have to go catch it when it's not hailing. So I don't know. I had a way to deal with it. Remember the Eevee I picked up? By walking just Glaceon. barely into the hail on Route 217 and using rare candy on Eevee. It evolved into Glaceon, ah. a Pokemon immune to the effects of hail. But it was still weak, and it doesn't learn any good ice type yeah. moves. Okay, that so works. I chucked it and Torterra into the daycare to make him strong. The only powerful ice type move with 100% accuracy in this gen is Ice Beam. Yep. To acquire Ice Beam, you have to spend 10,000 game corner coins. 10,000 game corner coins cost 200,000 Poké Dollars. And I was completely broke after spending all of my money on the daycare. So, I came up with a get-rich-quick scheme. Make Staraptor hold a luck incense, walk up to some snobby rich kids, and beat them up repeatedly with the first seeker go. until the entirety of their parents' wealth is securely in <laughs> my pocket. Then I blew it all on a single TM. 
With that done, it was just a matter of running up and down for another 8 hours. Once Glaceon and Torterra were level just 100, I was ready to take on the Blizzard. I taught Glaceon Ice Beam and Shadow Ball, and went to the Move Reminder to get Ice Shard. The there battles through Route 217 were straightforwards. I Shard the Pokémon with priority moves, Shadow Ball the Pokémon resistant to Ice, and Ice Beam the rest. Snowpoint City Gym was not as easy. Ooh. The first issue was the puzzle itself. A few of the trainers in the gym have Snovers, then Sneasels. Snovers set up Hail with the Snow Warning ability, and in Gen 4, weather effects last indefinitely. Then the Sneasels have a quick attack, forcing my Glaceon to stay in and use a priority ah. move. The thing with this is that Ice Shard or Quick Attack both don't do enough to KO a Sneasel. So I needed to find a path through the gym that avoided all trainers to not risk getting into one of these Snover Sneasel fights. It took a while, but after looking at a map of the gym for nearly 15 minutes, wow. Chad and I were able to find a route skipping all of the trainers in the gym I like it. while solving the puzzle. Of course, that wasn't the only difficulty in the gym. We still had Candace. Candace opens with a Sneasel, which was simple. Since it wasn't hailing yet, we're able to outspeed its quick attack with Aqua Jet for the knockout, but Pokemon 2 is where things get more complicated. If Candace sends out a Bomb of Snow next, it starts hailing with Snow Warning. A Bomb of Snow itself can be taken out easily with Glaceon's Ice Beam. Um, like, try to see if there was a way to learn, like, Sunny Day or Rain Dance on one of his Pokemon, like the Float Soul. But I guess the problem is you run the risk of taking damage if you do that, so. Beam, and the Pillow Swine that follows it. But the reason that hail is a problem ah, is because of Frostlass and its ability. Snow Cloak. Snow Cloak in Hail makes moves miss one fifth of the time. To guarantee the KO, I need to move on Glaceon that never misses. And as you can clearly see, uh... Glaceon doesn't have one of those no miss moves. Well, except it does. The Hail here that causes the accuracy issue also solves it. As it turns out, Blizzard bypasses the accuracy check oh, while Hail. So I was able to Blizzard with 100% confidence there you go. and take out the Frostlass, nabbing me the seventh badge. I dealt with the Lake Acuity stuff, then wiped out the Galactic Headquarters, getting the Master Ball from Cyrus along the way, and headed up to Spear Pillar for the end of the world. Oh, you thought I was talking about the whole portal thing? No, it, it's another team battle. But for <laughs> real though, this one was surprisingly easy. None of the opposing Pokémon, no priority moves. So Floatzel was able to surf, instantly drowning everything on the field. I hopped into another dimension real quick and caught Giratina with the Master Ball. It wasn't quite as strong as I needed it to be, so I biked up and down for two hours until it was level 66. I also beat up the rich kids again for money, for some like stat it. boosting items, and a few TMs I'll explain later. I like that too. Then, I was able to move through Route 222, only fighting a single trainer with a Wingle. Alright, Kuro level 100. Attack. Should just absolutely crush with the uh, aerial aces. He's gonna quick attack, yes. he's gonna quick attack! No! Which I forgot had quick attack. Oh no! So I reset and got everything all over again. When oh, I returned no. to the window, I remembered it had quick attack this time. Now, onto the final gym. The opposing Pokemon are now getting to the levels where every battle needs to be meticulously planned out. Quick attack the Jolteon with Staraptor to outspeed its own quick attack, Earth Power the Raichu with Giratina, Surf the Luxray with Floatzel, and with a Silk Scarf on Staraptor, quick attack the Electivire to get the 8th badge. From here, it was a quick jog through Victory Road and a simple rival battle before the Elite Four I believe, gauntlet. I believe, I dude. taught my team some important TMs, leveled up Giratina one last time to restore balance, and went nice. in. No going back now. The start of the Aaron battle was simple. Aerial Ace is Yon Mega, Earthquake to Drapion, Aerial Ace the Vespaquen, and Aerial Ace the Heracross. The Scizor, though, was trouble. Scizor knew Quick Attack, and it had enough okay. defense where my own Quick Attack or Aqua Jet couldn't take it out. There were no priority moves that could defeat it in one shot. Just hope it so attack. my solution was Giratina, who wasn't affected by Quick Attack. The problem with Giratina was that it was only level 69, and a level 69 Giratina couldn't normally defeat a Scizor in one hit. Well, not without Natural Gift. Natural, natural gift, gift is a move that changes the its fire typing. Fire Berry, dude, genius, genius. So Natural Gift is a move that changes based on the item that you're holding and the berry you're holding, and it was a really cool strategy back in like the Sun and Moon days where you'd run like Natural Gift. Uh, Oka Berry or something to hit. Uh, I remember running Natty Gift Scissor myself to actually counter an, an opposing Scissor. So really cool stuff there. ...and damage based on the berry that your Pokemon is holding. Give Giratina an nice Oka Berry, idea, and Natural Gift becomes a 60 power fire type move. So I did just that and incinerated the Scizor, winning the first battle. Nice. Bertha was next, but with Torterra, the battle was simple. Giga Drain everything except Gliscor, where you use Ice Beam with Glaceon. Flint was another simple one. Surf the Houndoom, Aqua Jet the Infernape, Surf the Rapidash and Magmortar, and Aqua Jet the Flareon. Lucian was next, an easy Shadow Ball sweep, except for Espeon, where I had to quick attack with Staraptor. The final fight with Cynthia was the most meticulously right. planned fight of them all. 
Glaceon's Ice Beam couldn't take out the Spirit Tomb in one hit, so I had to give it an Icicle Plate to deal just enough damage. Okay. I dig that. Lucario had extreme speed, so I had to use Giratina. Giratina was leveled exactly to 69 and given just enough stat boosting items to outspeed. Giratina was also given choice specs, which I picked up in Celestic Town. So Earth Power just barely KO'd. I like it. I made sure Glaceon had enough speed to outspeed the Garchomp to KO it and Togekiss with Ice Beam. Almost I touched there. her after close combat to one hit KO the Milotic. Then nice it was an Ice Beam onto the Roserade to finish off the challenge and beat Pokemon Platinum without taking a single hit point of damage. What a legend, 138 dude. hours, 37 minutes, what a legend. not including the resets. And that's how I did it. If you enjoyed this and want to see more. Oh my God, I gotta say, that was absolutely incredible, dude. Incredible. For real, that was one of the most insane challenges I think I've ever witnessed. And it took a tremendous amount of meticulous planning from both Small Ant and his community in the Twitch chat. I loved it, I loved it. And if anything, this has just inspired me to try something like this on my own. Not quite a no damage playthrough, but maybe we can come up with something else to do on our Twitch live streams. Thank you again to Small Ant for letting me do a reaction to this video. Incredible stuff, man. Very, very impressive. I hope the A-Drive Army goes and shows you some love on your channel. And if you are new to my channel, I hope you guys enjoy all the amazing Pokemon content I create here. I upload two Pokemon videos every single day. Be sure to like the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you guys are new. Get those notifications turned on. And let me know in the comments section below a really cool challenge run idea if you got any there. For myself and for Small Ant as well, I will catch you guys on the next one. If you guys really like this video, I know you're gonna love this video. It's pretty epic. YouTube thinks that you're gonna like this video, so check out one of the two and have yourself a great day.